Oh my! Was it your bag? I thought it was garbage. I'm so sorry about that. My mother-in-law threw away my bag. I was stand at the side of it in the trash can, mixed in with piece of vegetables and meat. It was badly cut up and disfigured. I could see the utter malice in it. Well, all your belongings are like trash anyway. What's the big deal? I couldn't bear to see you leave your garbage at my front door. As a mother-in-law, I couldn't overlook it. You should be thankful to me. What have you done? It was a bag that I had been treasuring. My husband bought it for me for my birthday. That wasn't it. There were ten million dollars in it. My name is Chelsea. I'm a housewife. When I got pregnant with my husband Philip, we got married. It was a shotgun wedding. Our daughter Lisa will be five years old this year. We have very loving and caring family dynamics. Basically, I'm living a happy life, except for one thing. That is my mother-in-law's bullying. When my father-in-law passed away a few years ago, my mother-in-law Kate decided to sell the house and move in with us. In the beginning, she was humble and appreciated everything I did for her. Within a year, her true nature began to emerge. She lectured me about the importance of being frugal and complained that I spent too much at every opportunity. My family depended on solely on Philip's income. He earned more than most people his age. We had enough money to live a comfortable life as long as we didn't splurge. We were even able to save money every month. We thought there was no need for us to be frugal. Kate didn't like our way of thinking and interfered in many things. Whenever I bought groceries, she spread them out on the counter before I could even put them in the refrigerator. She compared each item with several advertisements to see if I bought it at the cheapest price. Then, of course I had to put them away myself afterward, and if something wasn't cheap enough, she even asked me to return it. Since she had been researching the prices so thoroughly, she was able to calculate the total cost of the dishes I cooked. She complained about the high cost per dish, the waste of electricity with the way I cooked, and other tedious details. I once rebelled against her, but she threw all the food in the pot into the trash. It's your fault for not obeying me, that all the food went to waste. I was illogically blamed. But she was so fierce that I gave up. It was not only about the family budget that she complained about, but also about my personal expenses. If I bought new clothes, you don't need these beautiful clothes. Wear what you already have until they become tattered. If I went out to lunch with a friend, she snatched the receipt. Next time, go to a cheaper place. Better if you stop eating out and wasting money. That money was the allowance Philip had given me, and I always managed within the budget. I never touched the family expenses for my personal use. If Philip were to complain, that would be one thing. But to have her complain, I had no reason to be scolded by her. The worst was when I was taking a nap alone on a very hot day. She turned off the air conditioner and opened all the windows. I woke up from the heat and was upset, thinking that it would have been ridiculous to get heat stroke from it. I asked her why she did what she did. It's obvious, isn't it? You think electricity for you is a waste? When I was your age, we only had a fan. Who cared about the old days? I complained to Philip, but she always put on a good face in front of him and Lisa. He had the impression that she was worse at spending money than saving it. He warned her softly, but he didn't believe me much.
She did have a habit of spending money. Contrary to what she always lectured me, she did not practice the same at all. Philip bought her a smartphone when she moved in with us. Until then, she only had a landline. She was excited to have the new phone and quickly mastered its use. She not only shopped her own stuff online, but also bought toys and clothes for her beloved granddaughter. I felt that giving Lisa everything was not good for her. But the problem was that Kate spent more than she could afford. She had a pension, and on top of that, she received an allowance from Philip, just like me. She spent them without thinking twice and asked him to cover the excess. He wasn't able to dispute the charges when they were used for his daughter and reluctantly paid. Well, I've told you all the negative things, but life itself wasn't all that bad. Kate was head over heels for my daughter and took good care of her. I was able to leave her at home and went out without worries. Philip seems to be somewhat aware of Kate's bullying and gave me a nice brand name bag as an apology on my birthday. The bag not only had a large capacity, but also had no metal parts. He must have chosen it because I had a slight metal allergy. Such subtle kindness was a source of emotional support for me. I told myself that a lot of people experienced similar bullying. I was willing to put up with it a little, but there was a limit to my patience. One day, when I came home from grocery shopping, Kate was waiting for me at the door. I wondered what was going on. She told me that we had just run out of milk and that I needed to go buy it right away. I had just come home and was tired. I thought that not having milk wasn't a big deal anyway. Can I do it tomorrow? Her face turned red at my question. What are you talking about? I'm telling you to buy it now because it's on sale only today. Don't you even get that? Stop complaining and go run. She wouldn't have backed down even if I tried to reason with her. So I had no choice but to go back out. Everything I bought earlier was okay to leave there. I didn't buy anything that needed to be refrigerated right away. She was going to check them one by one anyway, so there was no need to put them away. I grabbed my bag and opened the front door. Wait a minute! I was about to leave when she stopped me. I thought she would tell me to tidy up first, but it was something else. You don't need to carry such a heavy bag just to go buy some milk, do you? You'll just get tired. Leave it behind. The bag that Philip gave me was so convenient that I used it regularly. Because of that, I left all kinds of things in it, and it was indeed getting heavy. I wondered if she was showing a little care for me. I was a little skeptical, but I did as I was told and left my bag behind. The milk on special sale was not yet sold out, and I bought some. On the way back, I thought that buying things we didn't need was a waste of money. When I returned, all the groceries that had been scattered earlier had been cleaned away. The only people in the house were Kate and Lisa. Since a five-year-old couldn't clean up everything, it was inevitable that Kate had done it. I thought it was unusual. I needed to check my phone, which I had left in my bag. My bag was missing. Kate must have taken it inside. I looked around and found the contents of my bag scattered all over the dining table. I guessed that Kate might have overturned the bag because it was too heavy for her. It was still missing though. As I was looking around to see if she had put it on the floor, Kate appeared from her room. I put away the groceries you left at the entrance. I'm in a good mood today. You should thank me. Thank you. I was about to ask her where my bag was, but she mentioned something strange. 
I also got rid of the kitchen garbage that was left with the groceries. I'm really ashamed that I have a daughter-in-law who can't even clean up after herself. I didn't want a mother-in-law like you. I muttered in my mind while I focused on the word garbage. There was no way I would have left such a thing at the entrance. We did have a trash can for food scraps just outside of the kitchen door. No matter what, I couldn't have left it at the front door. I opened a little of the can to see what she was talking about. Even luxury brand goods are no better than food scraps if a woman like you has them in her possession. As a mother-in-law, I can't leave food scraps at the entrance. That's why I made sure to put it in the trash can. I found my cut-up bag mixed with scraps of vegetables, meat, and last night's leftovers. What a mess she had made. I knocked over the can and scattered the contents out. Then I tried my best to remove the pieces of my bag that had been chopped up. She grinned and looked down at me. Oh, that's just pathetic. Going through the garbage. I told you to save money, but I didn't tell you to go that far. I'm sure Philip would be disgusted to see his wife like this. I glared at her. There were 10 million in that bag. She flinched a little, but she shook her head and denied my statement. Liar! There is no way that bag contains that much money. Besides, even if it did, your wallet is on the table. I ignored her fussing and kept going through the garbage to find the pieces of the bag and the scattered pieces of paper. The 10 million was a homemade check given to me by Lisa. She had seen Kate calling me to save money and thought that if I became rich, I wasn't going to be bullied. She gave it to me on my birthday. I kept it in my bag along with a birthday card as Lucky Charms. I was able to retrieve a few pieces of the card, but it was cut into tiny pieces with great care. I was hoping to somehow put them back together, but they were soaked in water from the garbage. There was nothing I could do. I was so desperate that I didn't notice Lisa standing behind me. I turned around and kept apologizing to her. I'm so sorry. The birthday card and the check you gave me are gone. I was so happy when you gave them to me. You worked hard to make them. Hearing me, Kate finally understood the situation. She regained her composure, feeling relief that she had not thrown away the actual money. Poor Lisa, your mommy is the worst. She easily disregards gifts from her daughter. Leave the bad mommy alone and let's play with Nana. She took the opportunity to make me look like the bad guy. The true culprit was right in front of our eyes. I could have just said so, but the guilt and the fact that I didn't take good care of them made my mouth clam shut. Then Lisa, who was standing in front of me, spoke up. I saw you, Nana. I know Nana cut mommy's back with the scissors. While I was out to buy milk, she witnessed everything. Not realizing, Kate must have been joyfully cutting up the bag. Kate was visibly unsettled and was about to excuse herself. But Lisa shouted first. I hate you, Nana! She cried out loud, throwing the toys Kate had bought. The word hate must have stabbed Kate so deeply that she collapsed to her knees. I too exposed with emotions that had been holding back and wailed like a child. Philip returned to such a scene. He freaked out and ran up to us. Then I explained what had happened. He saw the pieces of the bag and Lisa's present all messed up and finally understood the extent of Kate's bullying. I didn't realize that you have been through more than I could ever imagine. I'm sorry. After he apologized to me, he condemned Kate and demanded to tell him everything she had done. According to her, 
She thought I was having it too easy as a stay at home mom at Philip's expense. She wanted to give me a taste of how she used to feel when she was younger. She was familiar with brand name products, and the high price of the bag I had received infuriated her. She had taken out my wallet and other stuff that couldn't be cut by scissors, but overlooks a present from Lisa hidden in an inside pocket. She ended up chopping them along with receipts. You knew you were doing something terrible. When the time came, I was going to say that Lisa had played a prank on you. Later, I found out that her comment made him instantly decide the future. Are you kidding me? Forcing your own misdeeds on your grandchild? It's no good for Lisa's education, and we can't have such a person in our house. This is a good opportunity. I'm going to ask you to leave. I hope you realize the importance of having money and family. Then he turned to Lisa and me. From now on, the three of us will live happily as a family. We don't have to force ourselves to save any money. We'll have one less person. We can live more luxurious and comfortable lives than ever before. Kate cried aloud behind him, but the decision was never overturned. A week later, Kate moved into a studio apartment that Philip had provided. It was equipped with the bare minimum of appliances, but the room looked old and haunted. We didn't want her to be kicked out and come back to us, so Philip agreed to pay only the rent and nothing more. If she wanted something, she needed to work and enjoy saving money as much as she would like. She now lives a frugal life, working at a job for seniors, and is not able to spend as much money as she used to. She's also on the cheapest phone plan and is using a simple cell phone. When she's at home, she apparently has a lot of free time on her hands. It would be bad if she were to fall ill or something, so Philip goes to check on her once a month. She keeps asking him to bring Lisa with him so she could spend some time with her. Lisa refuses to see her, and there's nothing we can do about it. The black sheep is gone, and the three of us are living a slightly richer and much happier life together. My mother in law had passed away. When I looked at her laying outside of her coffin, and saw some of her precious things next to her, a photo caught my eye. It was a photo of the two of us. With tears running down my eyes, I picked up the photo. The way the lighting was shining, I saw there was something written on the back of the photo. Huh, what is this? I turned the photo over and was stunned. My name is Mia. I'm a 32 year old businesswoman. I married my husband, Henry, three years ago. We met at a matchmaking party and began dating. After he asked me out, we got along really well and decided to get married after two years of dating. We quickly went to meet each other's parents to ask for their approval of marriage. When I went to Henry's parents, I was super nervous. Thanks for coming to the visit. It's lovely to meet you. My name is Mia. Nice to meet you too. I'm Henry's mom. The first person we met at the door was Henry's mother and she greeted us with an incredibly kind smile. I felt relieved because she seemed like a very good person. I saw Henry's father seated with his legs crossed and a stern look on his face. I immediately became nervous again. I said, hello, and he replied with a curt voice, never changing his facial expression. He made it seem like I was stealing Henry away from him. Henry's mother chimed in with a laugh, telling me not to worry, that her husband is just like that because he's nervous. My mother-in-law asked me so many questions and shared many stories about Henry. I had a really fun time. Henry's father stayed quiet, but, but since Henry's mother was there, I stopped worrying. Henry was also super nervous. When he met my dad, my mom passed away from an illness when I was in high school, so I lived alone with my dad. When I graduated college and started working, I decided I'd feel bad to leave my dad alone. 
and that he'd probably be lonely, so I lived with him until I'm getting married. Well, I was also worried that if I left my dad alone, he couldn't eat properly or take care of the house. My dad usually is very nice to everyone, but maybe he was nervous, or maybe he wanted to be strict with the fiancé of his only daughter, but he greeted Henry the same way my father-in-law had greeted me. Seeing my dad like that, Henry got even more nervous, and I remember finding it funny at the time. After meeting each other's parents, we got married and we began our newlywed lives. Henry and I rarely argued and we had a happy married life. We often went to visit his family. My mother-in-law always greeted me warmly with a smile. Mia, come in! Sorry for being a bother. Mom, we brought you some sweets. Oh, thank you, Henry. Let me try them now. Ah, let me help you. Henry always helped out his mom when he went to go visit his parents. As their only son, he seemed grateful to his parents and wanted to do what he could to thank them for raising him. Henry's mother was always very happy. When he helped her, she would smile widely. We would eat sweets together, chat happily, and then enjoy dinner together. This is so delicious. Thank you. I'm really happy to hear you say that. My husband never says anything about my cooking, so sometimes I get worried whether it actually tastes good. If it tastes bad, I'll tell you. So I should assume that if you don't say anything, then it means it tastes good? Maybe my father-in-law got embarrassed, but he stopped talking and continued to eat in silence. My mother-in-law looked at him with a smile. What is it? You keep looking at me. So annoying. My mother-in-law laughed again. I could feel that the two of them really loved each other. My mother-in-law always took care of me. We only have Henry, right? Of course, he's a good son and all, but I personally wanted a daughter. So I see you as my own daughter. Hearing you say that makes me really happy. She and I would go out together, either to cafes or to go shopping. Mia, look, these would look so good on you. My mother-in-law used to work as a fashion coordinator, so her fashion sense is really great. I liked clothes, but I never really knew what suited me. So when I'd go out and go shopping with my mother-in-law, she would help me choose. Thanks to that, I would end up buying things I really like. When I'd wear what my mother-in-law chose for me at work, people would always compliment me. Going out shopping with my daughter and seeing her wear the clothes I picked for her, it's like a dream. I'm so glad you became part of our family. I'm also really happy to have you as my mother-in-law. I'm so happy. Does Henry cause you any problems? Not really, he works hard. That's good to hear. If anything ever happens, you can talk to me about it. Even if I am his mom, I will give you my unbiased opinion. Thank you. Since my mom had passed away, my mother-in-law acted like my real mother. I began to think of her as my second mom rather than my mother-in-law. Three years passed since Henry and I got married, and I began to think, I had liked to give my mother-in-law a grandchild. But at that time, Henry suddenly got a call from his father. Dad, what happened? Huh? Is mom? Seeing how Henry had frozen, I had a horrible feeling. Henry, what happened? Mom passed away. What? It was just too sudden. My mother-in-law had collapsed, and by the time they took her to the hospital, she'd already passed away. Both Henry and I were in complete shock. In a panic, we headed to the hospital and met my father-in-law. He was distraught. Why did this happen? How can I live on my own? Dad. He was on the verge of tears. My father-in-law usually hid his emotions, but he really loved his wife. Henry and I tried to console him and began preparing my mother-in-law's funeral. After she treated me as her own daughter, I wanted to send her off properly. She was technically just an in-law to me, but I wanted to thank her for all the love she had shown me. I wished I could have introduced her to grandchildren and wished I could have spent more time with her. Before the funeral began, I wanted to take one last look at my mother-in-law's face, so I looked in her coffin. She had the same kind of look on her face as she did whenever I'd visit her. She looked like she was asleep and that she'd wake up as soon as I called her name. When I looked at her laying inside of her coffin, I saw some of her precious things next to her. A photo caught my eye. It was a photo of the two of us. This photo was one that we took when we went shopping together. We were at a clothing store where a friend of hers works. 
The two of us posed in the clothes we had bought, and her friend took the photo of us. We had taken that photo on my mother-in-law's phone, but she had printed it out and kept it with her. Realizing how much she cared about me made me very happy. With tears running down my eyes, I picked up the photo. The way the light was shining on it, I saw there was something written on the back of the photo. Huh? What is this? I turned the photo over and was stunned. On the back of the photo was the date my mother-in-law had passed away and the words, done. At that moment, I had thought to myself that this was something serious, feeling that something bad had happened. I slipped the photo into my pocket and closed the lid of the coffin. What could that mean? Done? Did it mean getting rid of my mother-in-law? Something else scared me. I've seen the handwriting before. After the funeral, Henry and his father and I returned home. The three of us sorted between my mother-in-law's belongings. She was gone. We barely said a word. My father-in-law was silent as usual, but his eyes were full of tears and he looked very lonely. Mia, Henry, thank you. My father-in-law thanked us, which was unusual for him. She had so many things, so it would have been tough for me to go through them all my own. Though he never said it out loud, my father-in-law must have really loved his wife. Don't worry, Dad. You can ask us for help anytime. My husband said that to his father with a kind smile. He was acting as kindly and reliably as he usually did. But I was full of fear. The handwriting on the back of the photo of my mother-in-law and I was clearly Henry's. I watched over Henry without letting him notice. He was looking around my mother-in-law's room. My father-in-law was going through his wife's things, but he noticed Henry seemed to be looking for something. What is it, Henry? What are you looking for? Huh? I, I no. Henry looked shaken. I became curious about mom's things. I thought if something caught my eye, I could take it as a memento of her. Ah, she really likes small things, like accessories, and about a lot of them. If there's anything you like, you can take it. Henry seemed relieved. When his father said that to him, he became very serious and continued to look through his mother's things. I wondered what I should do. I thought my husband was suspicious, but I didn't have any proof that he had done something. I couldn't report him to the police just based on suspicions. And more than anything, I didn't want to think that way about the husband I loved, who had always treated his mother so kindly. I could be a criminal. But I couldn't shake away my suspicions, and everything he did, it scared me. I couldn't relax while I was home. Around that time, I suddenly got a call from my dad. Dad, what is it? Mia, I'm sorry for a call all of a sudden. I think I hurt my lower back. Oh, are you okay? It seems a bit serious, so can you come and help me around the house? Huh, is it that bad? Can't you please come over? Sure, sure. I explained what had happened to my husband and we decided to go over to my dad's house. Henry agreed that I should go take care of my dad. I felt bad thinking this way, but I thought to myself that my dad got hurt at the perfect time. Thanks to this, I could spend some time away from my husband. I packed a few days for the clothes and headed to my dad's. When I made it, the door was unlocked. Dad, I'm here, are you okay? I yelled from the front door. My dad walked towards me perfectly fine. Mia, are you okay? Huh? What do you mean? Dad, didn't you injure yourself? Huh? A lie? I noticed that you were acting strangely at Henry's mother's funeral. Your expression changed right before the funeral began. So I knew something must have happened. Henry was acting strangely too, but he seemed to be different. Huh? Does this come to mind? Has he done anything suspicious lately? Hearing my dad say that, my knees caved in and I collapsed on the spot. My dad hugged me and walked me to the sofa. Thanks, Dad. It's okay, you must be exhausted mentally. If something's bothering you, why don't you tell me? I told him what I had seen written on the back of the photo. I see, it seems we should look into this. My dad quickly began making phone calls. Actually, my dad was a detective. He called someone who specializes in forsenic handwriting analysis. Mia, stay here for a while. I will do all that I can to look into this. Got it. I pretended to be as calm as possible. 
I told Henry that my dad's condition was bad and that I had to stay over with him for a while. Henry didn't seem to doubt me. My dad began investigating the death of my mother-in-law. Around that time, Henry suddenly visited my dad's house. Ah, Henry! What happened? Nothing in particular. I just wanted to check up on your father. Ah, oh, really? Um, well, he seems to be doing much better, but it'll take a while until he's completely healed. Really? Can I come in? Just say hello? Huh? Uh, no, he's actually sleeping now. Really? Henry smiled as he always does, but his eyes were cold. Hey, why do you still have the chain lock in place? Huh? Aren't we married? Why are you being so cautious? No, no, I'm not. Then open the door and let me in. No, no, that, that is... Mia, do you know something? Have you said something weird to your father? Huh? What do you mean? For example, that I killed my mom. When he said that, Henry was no longer smiling. My heart beated so loudly. I was glad that I had the chain lock there. A weird rumor is going around and it's getting some troublesome. Your dad's a cop, right? If the police get suspicious and investigate me, it'll be a pain to deal with. Get suspicious? I already know that you have a ton of debt. Didn't you ask your mother to help you pay it off? You couldn't pay off your debt, so you killed her and tried taking her life insurance, right? If you really did that, you're the worst. Your mother cared so much about you, but you took her life in order to pay off your debt, you murderer. I couldn't take it anymore. I knew saying this would put me in danger, but I couldn't forgive Henry for hurting my precious mother-in-law. Henry began shaking intensely. So, you knew that much? In that case, I have to get rid of you too. My husband began trying to force open the door. Of course, since the chain was in place, he couldn't. But seeing his eyes filled me with fear. Those weren't the eyes of a normal person. Those were the eyes of a criminal who genuinely wanted to kill me. In panic, I ran away and hid somewhere in the house where I knew I'd be safe. Hey, don't run away from me. Your father isn't home, is he? I will kill you before he comes back. I quickly grabbed my phone and called my dad. Dad, save me. Henry is here. As I spoke to my dad, I heard a loud metallic noise and the sounds of footsteps walking over broken glass. My breath got caught in my throat. If I make any noise, I'll find out where I am. Hey, Mia, where are you? Answer me. After hearing his voice, I heard loud bangs. It seemed he was holding a weapon of sort and was banging it on the walls and doors. I kept my mouth closed and made sure I didn't make a sound, but he quickly found me. He tried turning the doorknob. I see. You're hiding inside the toilet. Hey, Mia, unlock the door. Don't make me break it open. I stayed silent. But sudden, there was a loud bang on the toilet floor. The banging continued. I began trembling. Henry was trying to break open the door like he did to the front door. I told you to come out! The sound of my husband yelling overlapped the sound with the banging. I was shaking out of fear and praying that the door wouldn't break. The door began to creak. Oh no, at this rate the door will break in and my husband will come in. And at that moment I heard the sound of someone collapsing. Stop, stop, yeah! I heard my husband yell. I heard the voice of another man. I've restrained the criminal. The police had arrived. When the police told me I was safe, I stepped out of the toilet and they handcuffed Henry and took him away in a patrol car. Mia, dad. I jumped and hugged my dad. Thank God you're safe. I'm so glad you're alive. Having caught Henry, the truth came out about the death of my mother-in-law. Following his interrogation, Henry admitted to the crimes and he was declared guilty. Henry had hid it from me, but he was addicted to gambling. He had a ton of debt, and his mother helped him pay it off. He went into debt again. He killed his mother to get life insurance money. He knew his mother always drank tea when she ate her sweets, so he purposefully brought her sweets every time he came over, and would secretly put an insecticide into her tea to poison her. After having consumed too much poison, my mother-in-law collapsed and passed away. Mia, I'm so sorry about my idiot son. I really don't know how I can ever apologize after you experienced something so horrifying. My mother-in-law looked down gloomily. Please lift your head. You're the one who's suffering the most here. Once he's in prison, your wife will finally have been avenged. 
I couldn't stop crying. My husband was never going to step out of prison again. But when I thought about my mother-in-law who lost her life or my father-in-law who lost the woman he loved, I couldn't hold back my sadness. I hope Henry reflects on what he's done and he spends the rest of his life in prison. I still occasionally visit my father-in-law and we look at photos of my mother-in-law and I together. She really was like a real mother to me. I will cherish the clothes she picked out for me forever. Even now, when I wear those clothes that my mother-in-law picked out for me, I remember her kind smile. Thank you for watching.